guys, welcome back to another fly tying Friday. Tonight I'll be tying a uh, crayfish pattern that I just started tying and it fished pretty well for me the other week so I'll get going here with it and we're starting off with a size 8 Allen bass bug hook. This is a B200 from Allen and 6 aught black thread. I'm just going to start to build up a little thread base on the shank and we're going to first tie in some dumbbell eyes. These are uh, large dumbbell eyes from Allen. We'll just get them going. This fly is going to ride hook up, so you want the dumbbell eyes in this view on top of the hook. Back legs, I'm using jig skirt material from Bass Pro Shops. This material, as you can see, has some uh, barred legs and some plain legs, and I like to get a good mixture of both those colors in the back. And I use about 12 individual strands for the back. tie those just down the bend of the hook where we tie our thread in. We want those to kind of lay down around the curve of the hook and it'll give the fly a natural curve to the body. Kind of like how a crayfish postures up in defense position. So now we're going to flip the fly over and we'll keep it reversed. Well, right side up really, but the hook is reversed, hook point up. And now we're going to tie in some flash. I'm using some like copper brown flashaboo. And it's just a regular size flashaboo. I take two strands of that and fold them in half so you have four strands total on the tail. tie in the feathers for our claws and I'm using a whiting brahma hen for that it's like a copper color and I'm taking two feathers off about midway up they should have a little bit of a taper point to them the ones down lower kind of rounded off and uh, I like the ones in the middle a little bit better and go ahead and just trim off the fuzzy fibers on the end and just give the thread something to grip to there. Just like that. And I'll lay them just across the hook and tie it in so they flare off to each side. Okay, so now we're going to add in the shell back of the crayfish. And for that I'm using some brown Swiss straw. We'll just take a chunk of that off the card here and tie that in to the back of the fly. And be careful that you don't um, cut the Swiss straw on the hook point. As I was tying a few of these earlier, the hook point would penetrate the Swiss straw, and when I went to lay it over, the Swiss straw split. So you don't want that to happen. Next we're going to add in some monofilament eyes. I just made these out of 30 pound test mono and basically I just burnt the end so it created a bubble on the end and let it cool. Added some paint and some UV glue and it makes like a clear black eye. I made two of those and we'll lay them over across each other so each flare out one side on the other and they'll create just little crayfish eyes. So now 
now I'm going to tie in the legs down the body. I'm going to do three legs and I'm using the barred legs from the jig skirt. I pulled them through the rubber band of the jig skirt so they're full length. And I'm going to tie them just in segments, three down the body. And just lay them so that the lengths go straight down the sides of the body. Now that we got the legs tied in there, I'm going to add the rib, and for that I'm using some black ultra wire and medium. That'll just give the fly a segmented look. Alright, so now we're going to create a dubbing loop. And what I'm going to do is just double the thread over, make a couple turns around the hook, creating a loop. Then go around the loop itself to make the hole tighter and for the body I'm using Sea Dragon dubbing from Fly Tires Dungeon and this is the hair's ear color and this dubbing is a, a mix of synthetic materials and it's got rubber legs throughout so it works great for a crayfish pattern, super buggy and just really lifelike. So what I'm going to do is just take a few generous clumps and align the fibers by just pulling them and realigning and pulling and realigning. And you can kind of hear that all those rubber legs stretching in there. But once you have all the material aligned, just go ahead and uh, feed that into the dubbing loop. We're going to use quite a bit of material on this. Be sure to comb the fibers out, make sure nothing's getting trapped. You add more than you need in the beginning because you're going to lose some in this little process here. So just be aware of that. Okay, so now we're going to take that dubbing loop and work it up to the head of the fly. Weaving our way in between the legs. And as we go, this material is going to set our legs in place. So. Once I have the back done, I uh, take a marker and just add a little bit of thin ray markings to the tail. I go ahead and fan that tail out a little bit. and add some UV glue to the tail to keep that in place. Alright guys, well that pretty much does it for uh, this crayfish pattern. It's a fantastic fly. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but um, once you get it in the water, you'll see what I mean. It swims.
pretty sweet with all those legs undulating and moving around as it drops so and uh, whenever it goes on the bottom those lead eyes make it stand straight up and those claws just go up in like a defense position it looks pretty awesome um, I had some really good luck on this at the Potomac uh, a couple weeks back and caught my personal best smallmouth on a fly rod which uh, right here is a picture of that um, it was a fantastic fish but um, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next week on another Fly Tie on Friday. Thanks for watching.